Hello, my name is Avro Welsh and I lecture in the School of English in University College Cork and I work on modern Irish literature. I'm also a writer myself, a novelist. And with Catherine Marshall, I was associate editor of uh, this wonderful volume uh, under the editorship of Fintan O'Toole. And today I've chosen to read one of the 99 entries, the one I was involved with, one of the many, um, about Elizabeth Bowen. The year is 1945 and she was writing about living through uh, London and wartime London during the Blitz and it seems to me to be a very appropriate um, reading for the times we find ourselves in so I hope you enjoy it, thank you 1945, The Demon Lover and Other Stories, Elizabeth Bowen Perhaps the strongest story in this landmark collection The Happy Autumn Fields opens with an evocation of an idyllic 19th century Anglo-Irish land-owning patriarch and his beautiful family strolling through the fields of his prosperous estate. The harvest is saved, and all is right with the world. The story feels like a deluded version of the old landlord system, until the reader realises that that is exactly what it is. This vision has been conjured up into the mind of Mary, a woman living in a bomb-damaged house in contemporary war-torn London. Mary is in imminent danger, but she cannot draw herself away from these dreams of a lost past. Gradually, the two worlds seep into one, as the instability of the present asserts itself in Mary's vision of the big house of her fantasy. The story of In the Demon Lover, this collection, captures much of Bowen's own unique imagination. Her upbringing between Bowen's court, a big house near Kildarry in North Cork, and England, Roy Foster has described her as a writer who felt most at home in the mid-Irish sea. There is a very particular combination of realism and a gothic imagination. All of these stories picture real people living with during the war, but all are in some sense also ghost stories. There is her extraordinary style, slightly baroque and yet immediate. For Bowen, born 1899, died 1973, the Second World War were years both of imaginative, fertile and, personally for her, very edgy time. War also brought out a new aspect in Bowen's relationship with her native country. She wrote secret reports on Ireland and Irish neutrality for the British Ministry of Information, which was seen retrospectively in some Irish quarters as spying. The reports reflect Bowen's complex allegiances. She wanted to support the British war effort but she also wanted to explain, as she does with considerable intelligence, why the Taoiseach, Eamon de Valera, had made his decision to keep Ireland neutral and why this was an inevitable decision. More importantly, the war and its dramatisation of her dilemmas fuelled Bowen's creativity. She writes in the preface to The Demon Lover, During the war I lived both as a civilian and as a writer with every pore open. Arguably, writers are always slightly abnormal people. Certainly, in so-called normal times, my sense of the abnormal has been very acute. In war, this feeling of slight differentiation was suspended. I felt one with and just like everybody else. We all lived in a state of lucid abnormality. The disruptions of the war, oddly, gave Bowen a sense of common purpose, making the deep uncertainties of our own identity merely part of the common human condition. When consequence of this lucid abnormality, her wonderful phrase, was her flood of writing about Ireland, Bowen's court in 1942, Seven Winters in 1943, and stories like The Happy Autumn Fields and Summer Night in this 1945 collection. In all of these Irish writings, Bowen looked homeward to North Cork as a place of stability and loyalty in an endangered and treacherous world. And her vision of Anglo-Ireland becomes her talisman, her source of imagination in war-disordered London. But even then, unease lurks in the North Cork terrain. Like Mary, the character in The Happy Autumn Fields, Bowen herself both needed a fantasy world, but knew that it too would crumble one day like a bombed out house. 
one of the other reasons I've chosen that piece is that my own novel on Elizabeth Bowen called The Last Day at Bowen's Court has well just come out but due to the times we find ourselves in it's going to wake a little bit of time before I can actually launch it. But I think of Bowen and I think of her endurance and her writing during the Second World War and uh, I celebrate it. Thank you very much. Thank you.